Um, we noticed this morning, my husband noticed this morning that um, one of our pigs is down. Um, stood in the corner. Um, this way, baby. This way, guys. This way. This way. Um, asked me to keep an eye on it. Um, it's only a few hours later. I've brought him like an oatmeal mash. I've brought him a few different things. He won't eat. He won't take water. Or I should say she. Um, she, uh, she just stands in the corner. Um, she has finally moved to her bed. Um, but she's got a dry nose. I got in there with her. And, um, yeah, she won't, she won't budge on us. Um, so I had told my husband pretty much what Joel Salatin had said, that You know, it sounds harsh, but if you have an animal that won't eat or drink, call it. It, it sounds unkind, but <sighs> these pigs are being raised for meat. And if she's not doing well, like uh, bringing in a vet isn't really going to change it. She'll either get better or she won't. Um, but she is being raised for meat. And um, if she can't... Uh, if she can't fulfill her role, then the humane thing for us to do is to put her down and, and butcher her a little bit earlier. Um, but yeah, she hasn't. Um... So I am just closing off the paddock to the rest of the pigs so they can't come and check on her or try and irritate me. But here she is. Um, she doesn't want to get up. It's okay. I know. You're hurting, hey? Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Her belly is a lot softer than it was before. I mean, she could just have some stomach upset. Um, I'm hoping that we can cull her before she passes, but I think it's a pretty safe bet to say that this girl is not long for the world. Yeah. Hey, you're okay. You're okay. Hi. I remember when you were a little baby. Now you're a big girl. Mm-hmm. No, she's sick, sweetheart. Mama, I need water. I need water. Okay. Provide them with good food, um, lots of, well, all the fresh air they want, fresh bedding, um, fresh water, um, fresh forest or pasture for them to graze on and um, yeah this is it and it's it's not easy when you're in a pen with an animal that you can see is hurting in some way shape or form and you can't figure it out because it does pull at your heartstrings it should pull at your heartstrings um, she's very docile right now. Um, she is one of the pigs that would never let you touch her. And now I can lay on top of her. Um, so if this is the end of her life, we're going to show her love and kindness, um, right up into the end of it. Can you look out though? Can you look out? Back up for a second. And next, come over here. Can you back up, please? Can you back up, please? Hey, hey, she doesn't want to stick. Can you just back up, please?
don't think I'd have nibbles. I know. Okay, come on. I'm going to bring her some food and see if she'll eat a little bit. Okay? Okay. So, come on. Can you stand right here and watch her for me? Yeah. I'm going to go get her a pail of food and see if she'll eat that. You stay here and keep an eye on her, okay? Don't let her eat my phone. Okay. This morning before work, when I went to go feed the pigs, I noticed one was lethargic. And he hasn't been moving all day. So, one sec, let me take this ear plug out. So, he's sick. If it was a young pig, we would maybe take it to a vet. Maybe get a vet to come out. But now it's a 220 pound animal. It's got three weeks to left in its expected lifespan before we would harvest it. It's sick. Now I have to cull it before it decides to die of natural causes on its own. If a pig dies of natural causes on its own in the middle of the night, then that's lost product. Because you can't bleed it out, you can't hang it, the blood's left in the system, and the meat is now ruined. So I went, got myself a new gun today, a little fancier than I would normally get. It was the last 22 Magnum on the shelf. So that's why I got the fancy Rainbow Warrior gun here. Now, I'm not going to show you me shooting the pig, but that is what's going to happen next. I'm going to go down, shoot the pig. And then gut the pig, skin the pig, and then take it in to a butcher. Because I'm just not set up to butcher it myself as of yet. And it's 24 degrees out Celsius, which is way too warm to be butchering and keeping pigs on an off-grid property where we don't have electricity don't have the proper cooling storage we have running water but it helps a bit for cleanup at the end but anyways I'll come back to you after the job's done I might not explain that properly in case I didn't here's the edit I bought the new gun that's a 22 Magnum. Because the other gun I had was just a 22. Regular caliber. I found last year with the 22 that often, like two out of the four times, the bullet didn't have enough power to penetrate the skull. So it was a messy situation. This gun is more powerful, as long as my aim is true, then it should be good. Shoot it, and then I got to cut its jugular in order to bleed it out. Okay, that was a good clean kill. No suffering, no thrashing around. It's something that you have to, you know, if you're taking it to the abattoir, you don't have to worry about that. If you're a homesteader who is going to be harvesting 
their own pigs, then that is something that you have to worry about. And that the kill might not be perfect. The limit of suffering is always the key at the end. Okay, I'm gonna hook it up, drag it to the fence, grab the skid steer, lift it out of the fence with the skid steer, and then go and uh, start harvesting. All right, I'm huffing and puffing, which is all right. It's just I am racing against time as much as I can. I know that I'll be doing this with a headlamp on. Remember, this all used to be sunflower field not too long ago. Now it's all plowed up fields ready for next year, courtesy of the pigs. You know, this video is obviously, if I haven't said it at the beginning, it's not for children to watch. My children will probably watch it and not be traumatized by it because, you know, since we've learned to start fires we've been eating animals actually probably a million years before that so it's innate it's instinctive it's in our mammalian brains that you have to kill there's going to be bloodshed and there's going to be guts and gore so I don't believe that a child who is watching it done properly would be traumatized. But I do understand if you're not used to harvesting an animal yourself that you might think that children would be traumatized from it. That's okay. That's how you raise your children. This is how I am going to raise mine. I won't critique you, you don't criticize me, and everybody's happy. Centralist thinking, the world needs more of it. Anyways, that's my rant. I'm going to run out of daylight soon, so I'm going to start this. Okay. So. This guy weighs in at 200, pretty much even. Like I said, it's not harvest time, but it's harvest time. So he made it to 200 pounds. I'm hoping those other guys will get up to 230, 240. This one's a, a Berkshire Tamworth Cross. They're not expected to get as big as your regular Yorkshire pigs would. That's it, all said and done. They'll get put in the back of the truck. And then off to the butcher as it goes. A couple hours. Once we had it hanging, a couple hours to skin it and gut it. Did it by truck light and by Skid steer light. But there you go. In the morning, gets delivered to the butcher and turned into bacon. I'm putting it in the back of the truck now. 
wrap it up in poly and it'll sit uh, overnight and it's about an hour and a half drive to the butcher in the morning for one pig I'd rather be driving for five but these guys are still eating they still got like another 30 pounds to put on you kind of see them there they're right there and there hiding in the bushes